Well, hello friends, my name is Nick, and today I'm gonna to talk all about my trellises that I have here in my home. I love my trellises. I think they are such a staple in my home, but I definitely don't talk about them enough. So I wanted to do a little spotlight on them today, uh, give you some tips and tricks and just explain how I use them. But it's just such an incredible way to display houseplants in your home. Normally people think about using these outside, but I think they are such an incredible way to not only save space, but allow yourself to have a visual vertical garden while allowing your house plants to climb up something that is going to allow them to grow to their fullest potential as you can see pretty clearly behind me here. So let me turn the camera around so we can see a little bit clearer. So just to give you the full experience, let's start all the way at the bottom here. So you see I have this little shelf unit and then on the top layer there is a bunch of climbing house plants that I have then attached to this wood trellis here that goes all the way up to the ceiling. And there is a window right next to it that's giving it some really good sunlight. This little wall indent here was like practically made for this trellis. Although I did use this one in my old home. If you've seen any of my old videos, you might recall this being covered in my Raphidophora tetrasperma that grew from the bottom to the top in like a matter of months. But let me show you what I have going on on this trellis here. This one down here is not yet attached to the trellis because it's still just beginning to vine, but this is my philodendron Jose Buono, I believe. This is the newest leaf right here. So in a matter of months, maybe it'll work its way over to the trellis, but pretty much everything else is attached to the trellis. Uh, this philodendron tripartitum is definitely going to be catching some attention. As you can see, there's actually two of them that I have here on this top layer working its way over to the trellis. And then the stars of the show, the two that are just really working their way up to the ceiling and just not taking any crap. Uh, this is my philodendron Jerry Horn. Thank you to everybody who helped me ID this in the past. And then my Syngonium Chia Pence. I recently just cut back one of these Syngonium Chia Pence. There's two vines that are working their way up from the ceiling or to the ceiling. I recently cut back one of them because it reached the ceiling. Uh, this other one here, I also have to cut back. If you see, it's kind of fallen. Uh, it's gotten a little too heavy for itself, so we will cut that off. Maybe I'll do a video on how to propagate Syngonium Chia Pens because it's a very easy houseplant to propagate and it definitely deserves some more attention, but they are definitely the stars of the show. This is from Ikea. I will link this trellis below as well if you are interested to get it yourself. I will say this thing is a nightmare to get up. You will have to do it with at least two people uh, because uh, it's it looks like it's fixed, but it bends like it folds It folds every which way and yeah, so it's kind of a nightmare to put up But it is less than $30 or maybe it is $30. I can't remember exactly But I think it looks fantastic and I am usually not the biggest fan of like Ikea aesthetics, but I think this uh, Just really looks much more rustic and vintage totally gives you that kind of vibe so you'll also see down here I have this uh, shelf unit here and I have attached some grow lights on the inside so this is basically I know this is about the trellis today but I might as well show you because the plants are sitting on it so I fixed grow lights underneath which I have linked on my Amazon store which I'll also have or my storefront not my store I don't got no store but I'll have that linked in the description as well if you are curious but just a really practical way for me to grow a whole bunch of plants. You can see there's like eight to ten on each layer right here and then I have seven or eight plants that are sitting on the top of the shelf here that are all working their way up to the trellis. And I like to decorate the trellis a little bit. I have some of these uh, strands of, uh, not sphagnum, Spanish moss, Tillandsia eusenoides, which this was already dead when I got it. I think this came in like an unboxing. I think they used it as like a wrapping to keep the plants safe inside the box, but I just was like, of course I'm gonna use this. So I've just put some pieces on my trellis, as you can see, because I think it just kind of gives us more of a of the earth vibe, which is what I'm trying to go uh, for more here in my living room. And I've also just kind of utilized the trellis in different ways, where I have this uh, Discidia acuminata uh, sitting on, just like hanging on a hook here. It's one that I have mounted. This is a really fun Discidia, in my opinion. Uh, but just a different way for me to have my uh, mounted plants where I don't have to nail them onto the wall and it's just super easy. If I got any more mounted plants, I would absolutely be just sticking them in uh, on the other notches on my trellis here. And that's honestly a pretty good idea. Or maybe I could transfer some of my plants that are taking up too much space in my home to mounts and then they'll take up less space and just be living on my trellis here. There's definitely a couple open spots 
although it is filling up. And I might as well just show you the other plants that are also growing on this trellis because why not? There's a philodendron pedatum here. Uh, I think that's pretty much the pretty much it though. There is a Sansevieria if you're down here. It's not on the trellis, but so we have the philodendron. Jose Buono still working its way up, and then on the trellis itself, we have the tripartitum, the pedatum at the lower levels of the trellis, and then working their way up to the ceiling where the Syngonium chia pens and the Philodendron Jerry Horn, which uh, they're doing very well with the light from the window right here. Also, some of these leaves on the Jerry Horn are really appreciating my Soltech Solutions aspect light, which of course, as always, you can use code NIC2022 to save 15% on any purchase you make on SoltechSolutions.com, and I will leave that linked below. But this isn't the only trellis that I have in my home. Uh, this is my, I have this one out here because it just fits more of the vibe of my living room. Like I said, I'm kind, kind of going for this more like of the earth vibe in my living room, but I also have one in my bedroom. So let's work our way over there. In my bedroom, I'm kind of going for more of this like modern meets vintage vibe. So I have utilized this white trellis here. And this one is from Lowe's, I'm pretty sure. If I can find a link to it, I will leave it in my description, but I'm sure this is just a standard trellis that you can find at pretty much every just big box store, garden center place, or on honestly probably most garden centers are going to have this style of trellis. This is pretty basic, but I think it's fantastic also for this kind of space that I have here. This wall that's next to a window, as you can see, not as close to a window. This one does have a little bit more space here. So I've utilized some mounted house plants just to fill up that space a little bit more. I could have even done like another kind of trellis deal going up this wall here and just, oh wow, that's actually a really good idea. I could always do that. These mounted plants aren't really taking up so much room, but that is, okay. We're we're making discoveries together here today. But <laughs> you will see I have also utilized the Spanish moss in places just to give it more of that just unintentional vibe. Like I, my goal with my houseplants, you know, it's kind of difficult to achieve this goal, but when you have this many houseplants, the goal is to make it look like everything has been just here for an eternity, just growing on its own. I didn't place these here. They have been here since before I was born. Like that's what I'm going for. I like everything to look very unintentional as, my shelf is in frame, which looks super intentional, but let's just pretend that's not there today. So this whole trellis vibe, I'm trying to just make it seem like, I didn't do this. This is just, these plants have a mind of their own. They have been doing this themselves for eons. Uh, just to point out the plants that we have growing on this trellis, because there is a lot more on this trellis here. Although I do have, I could have utilized this a little bit better if I got one of those things that I have out in the living room. I could put plants underneath here too, if I wanted to, but. For right now, I don't have any there. There's also one of my socks on the floor. Might as well move that. LOL, okay, so uh, let's see what we have here. Well, so the one that you're probably noticing the most is this one that's working its way off the top here. Uh, this is my Philodendron Rubicens Red Emerald. When I purchased this, I purchased it in a six inch pot. It had like a little wood stake inside the planter, but this plant was no more than like a foot tall maximum. And I've only had this one for like two, three years at this point. Uh, I had grown it up in my old home. I actually grew it on this moss pole that I have right here, which has my Raphidophora tetrasperma on it, which not to go off on a tangent, but this is the same Raphidophora tetrasperma that was on the trellis, the other trellis in my old videos. But when I moved here, of course, it's a little difficult to move houseplants that are this big. So I did end up cutting back the plant pretty much completely. Uh, I propagated some of the cuttings and, uh, but this plant here, I think I gave all those cuttings away because this is my only plant that I have right now, which is all the ones I cut back and they've regrown, which they still have regrown to the top of the moss pole at this point. Sorry, I'm filming too low. Uh, as you can see, this newest leaf right here is nearly at the top of the moss pole, which is really, really good to see. I'm really thrilled that it's regrown, but basically just saying, like, if I have to move out of my apartment, I'm going to have to cut these back completely. They are not going to live uh, happily ever after. They're not going to be able to transfer very well uh, on this. So, but as you can see, basically what I'm trying to prove the point here is that even if that has to happen, you can see this plant has regrown itself very, very wonderfully. Look how wonderful these new leaves look. Fantastic. Anyway, beyond just the Philodendron Arubicens Red Emerald, we have a plethora of other plants, even though admittedly that is the one that's probably catching your eye the most. But if you look carefully, you're going to notice that there is literally like eight other <laughs> types of like aroids growing up this trellis here. This is the only one that's not attached to the trellis. This is a Drymonia chirabogana kind of 
the uh, black sheep of our video today. It doesn't really belong, but just don't have anywhere else to put it right now. It's a little too tall, but I should get something else that I can attach to the trellis because that is admittedly a little bit of a wasted space. As fabulous as it looks, I think we could all agree. But some of the other ones that you're going to find hiding on the trellis, uh, there is a philodendron bipinifolium here. This one's getting pretty tall now, as well as this. I don't know what this is. This I was sold to me as a Syngonium, like a mystery Syngonium. Some of you have mentioned that it's like the Philodendron Holtianum, or however you pronounce it. Uh, here's a new leaf. Some of these leaves are getting some kind of damage to them. I don't know how well you can see that. It, I thought it was pests, but I haven't noticed any pests on this houseplant. But this leaf looks fantastic. So I'm looking forward to watching this one grow, but obviously it's like four or five feet tall, so it's, it's doing its thing. Over yonder, we have, this is a Philodendron Campos Portoanum. This one is kind of, you know, the leaves don't look that amazing. Uh, it's kind of taking its time, figuring out what it's doing. There's some new leaves up here that are still like, kind of figuring out what they're doing, haven't quite unfurled, so. We're just gonna leave this guy be, definitely kind of on the struggle bus, but fortunately, because there is just so much going on on this trellis, you're really not even going to notice it. And behind it, there is a philodendron. It's so dark, I don't even think the camera's gonna pick up uh, the foliage, but it's a philodendron Burl Marks Fantasy, working its way all the way up. You can see almost to the top of the trellis at this point. That's the newest leaf right there. And it works all the way down. So here are the planters. This is the Burl Marks. You can see this old, this leaf is getting a little tired. Uh, and here's the Campos Porto on them. And then there's also a philodendron squimith from this leaf is just beckoning. Uh, this is just working its way over to the trellis. It was held up on a bamboo stick prior, but now it's just worked its way over to the trellis. And we have a new leaf right here. And I should mention that you do have to attach these to the trellis. They're not just going to attach themselves. If you were in like a greenhouse or outside where it's humid enough, these roots, sorry, I'm struggling getting this to stay not blurry. Uh, outside, these would probably root up and climb up on their own or in a greenhouse, but here in my home, it's not as easy as that. I do have to attach them. I use just plant tape, which I believe you will also find on my Amazon storefront thingy, my affiliate page. But some of these roots, as you can see right here with this philodendron bipinifolium, have really attached themselves to the trellis, so they really are feeling themselves. This thingy is just climbing up on its own, so some of these definitely root easier than others, but most of these plants I really do find myself having to uh, physically attach them, but it does seem as these grow a little bit more. I'm noticing with the Campos Portuanum, these rootlets that are coming out here, it looks like some of those are kind of attaching themselves to the wood. So perhaps over time these are adapting, but like I keep trying to drive home, in most cases you are going to have to use uh, plant tape or something or other to adhere your plants to the trellis. And there are a couple more plants. I know I keep getting off on different ideas, but there are even more plants on this trellis. This is a Syngonium macrophyllum. It looks very similar to uh, the Syngonium chia pens. More longer leaves, a little bit skinnier, a little bit of a brighter color to the leaves. My chia pens have really, really dark leaves. And you can see there's even more of this plant, another plant inside the pot that's just starting to work its way up now. Obviously this other one has gotten ahead of its brother. We have this philodendron, Bernardo Pazii, at least what I purchased is a Bernardo Pazii with these nice triangular leaves. And I think that's everything on the trellis. But it's there's so many. You can see all the planters down here. Uh, this is the Syngonium planter. This is the Bipinifolium. I showed you those already. The uh, Squimiferums back there. The red emeralds in that planter, the Syngonium macrophyllums in there, and the Bernardo Pazii is in there. I'm sure a lot of that just sounded like gibberish. But this is really just, like I was saying, such a fantastic way to not only save space, uh, but allow your houseplants to grow to their fullest potential while looking absolutely fabulous. Uh, this trellis right here, I literally just have it sitting on, do you see just like that black nail right there? I have two nails just nailed into the wall. This trellis is just sitting on it. Uh, it was pretty, I mean, still a little invasive if you think about it, but pretty non-invasive as far as the other trellis goes, which that one is screwed in in four different parts, anchored into my wall. So that one does require a little bit more. As I mentioned, that one does kind of fold in and out. It's kind of a nightmare, as fabulous as it looks. 
But the great thing about these is even though I just have this plain white one here and the other one in the living room is just unfinished wood, you can paint these. If you have a pink plant room, you can paint these pink. They are extremely customizable. You just gotta put in a little bit more work, but fortunately for me, they look perfect in my home as just plain white or wood. And there are so many more trellises out there. I'm not obviously affiliated with any of the trellises I am talking about today. So I am not trying to convince you to buy these, but they've been working really well for me. I would even consider adding another trellis in my home if I had the space or in a future home because it really is just a phenomenal way to grow houseplants. I couldn't speak any more highly of it. Thank you all so much for joining me today as I gushed about my trellises, my pride and joys. My home would truly not be the same without them. They are definitely a staple, like I said. And I feel confident that any future home I move to will feel like my home if it has my trellises. They really do just have such that vibe I'm looking for really just gets the job done in just a very small amount of space. And I'm really heavily considering that idea that I had, my little epiphany, that I could move these mounted plants right here, just these ones, over to the trellis in my living room, hang them on the S-hooks like I have the Discidia hanging up there, and then find another white trellis and round up the wall here, and then I can have even more plants going on here. I could even have some on the floor working their way up. The world is my oyster, but that sounds like a video for another day. So I'm gonna cut it off here. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you have any questions, let me know. I will try to get back to them as I know this is a fun, different way to grow houseplants. So thank you so much for joining me. If you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage. Subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.